In this tutorial, we will cover the terrain tool. A terrain model is generated from a group of contour lines, which are open or closed objects, and a site. Now this is also a 2D object, but it must be closed. These contour lines can be imported or drawn. Here we start with several contour lines imported from a surveyor. And keep in mind that open contour lines need to cross the site boundaries and should not cross each other. Also keep in mind that contour lines represent slices of a landform and are at different elevations. Typically, these elevations are at round intervals. For example, our contours are at two foot intervals. We switch to right view so that you can observe that our contour lines are indeed at different heights. We're now ready to generate the terrain model. The first step is the selection of the contour lines. Because our contours already have different heights, the order in which we pick them is insignificant. Here we switch back to top view for easier viewing and activate the pick tool. To select the contour lines, we could pick each of them individually. Because the pick order in this case is insignificant, we can area pick the contours. Here's how it's done. And all the contour lines are now selected. However, so is the site boundary for the model. And we must deselect it. With the pick tool still active, move the cursor over the site while holding the shift key down. And once a red circle with a minus sign appears, this indicates the object is being removed from the selection, we click on the site. We now have all the contours picked without the site, and we're ready to generate the train model. So we activate the train model tool and click on the site. And there you have it. This type of a terrain model is called meshed model. There are other types, which we shall do soon. Because we're still in edit mode, let's take this opportunity to explore options available to us for the terrain model from the tool options palette. The density of the mesh is determined from the mesh size field. And the default is set to two feet. We change it to four feet and observe how the model changes. Turning on the triangulate option beneath it produces a triangulated mesh, a variation of the plane mesh. If we choose the step terrain model type, contour lines are inserted to the site and then extruded according to the heights we've determined. The third and final terrain model type, triangulated, again inserts contour lines to the site, but they're not extruded. Instead, the non-planar surfaces between them are triangulated, given the contours are arranged at different heights. To demonstrate some of the remaining options in the Tool Options palette, let's regenerate the same terrain model again. This time we're going to do so with the contours lying flat on the ground, instead of at different heights. Undo so that we're left with the original wires and the site boundary. To make the example more manageable, we shall first delete half the contour lines. Next, we'll set them to z equals zero. And to place all the contour lines at zero height, we select them all with the pick tool. Then in the pick tool options palette, in the z field for origin, we enter zero and press enter. The contour lines are now flat on the ground as we intended. We are now ready to regenerate a terrain model. We shall do so by asking the program to assign heights to the contour lines at appropriate intervals. We can do this by selecting the set new interval in the tool options palette and entering a value in its field. Here we entered four feet. Note that when the contours already had elevations assigned, we use the option use existing, which is the default. And when the program assigns elevations, it only makes sense to assign them in proper order. Specifying this order is our responsibility and will be determined by the order in which we pick the contours. For the sake of this illustration, we shall make our land slope the opposite way from before. With the terrain tool active and while pressing the shift key, click on the contours in the order shown.
After picking the last contour, release the Shift key and click anywhere in the project window away from a pickable entity. Lastly, click on the site and observe the result. Now watch as we change the set new interval value to 2 feet. We have yet to cover the site starting height field. Simply put, the value in this field specifies the lowest elevation of the terrain model, which becomes the basis for the remaining elevations. Currently, the starting height for the model is set to 1 foot, and this is the default. Here we change it to 6 feet and observe the result. Finally, we shall generate one more model, a step model using the so-called pre-picked method. Select step in the tool options palette. With the pick tool active and the shift key pressed, select the contour lines. Then with the train tool active, click on the site. In this tutorial, we use three different methods for picking and deriving terrain models. With this note, we conclude this terrain modeling tutorial.